worst video game music of all time, Crazy Bus for the Sega Genesis. I was introduced to it 10 years ago, and ever since, I often wonder, what makes this music so bad, and is it possible to learn this power? The Sega Genesis has two sound chips. The one used by Crazy Bus is the SN76489, which has three tone channels and one noise channel. For the tone channels, the frequency is set using a 10-bit number, having a range between 0 and 1023. This will be important later. Our ears can hear frequencies from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz, which is a much larger range than 1024. So for the sound chip to have a more useful frequency range, the 10-bit numbers are mapped using this formula, where little n is a 10-bit number and big N is a clock frequency provided by the Genesis. This could be two different values depending on whether the Genesis was for a country using the NTSC television standard or the PAL television standard. The home country of Crazy Bus, Venezuela, uses NTSC. Let's go over the code for the music first. A random number up to 40 is chosen, then multiplied by 10. After 500 is added to this number, it is set as the pitch for the first tone channel of the sound chip. The remaining two tone channels are set up in the same way, but adding larger amounts resulting in higher pitches. Lastly, it holds these notes for 10 sixtieths of a second before repeating these instructions ad nauseum. But in this code lies a problem. Let's listen to the third tone channel by itself. It's supposed to be the high-pitched channel, but you'll hear these occasional low notes. The other two channels don't have these bass notes. From the way the random numbers are selected, we can determine the range of the first channel's pitch is from 500 to 900, and the range of the second channel is from 600 to 1000. Lastly, the third channel ranges from 700 to 1100. The problem here is that the pitch is a 10-bit number, which can have a maximum value of 1023. Any number larger than that will overflow. For example, a pitch of 1024 will overflow to zero, a much lower number than the intended 700 to 1100 range. We can expect these bass notes to occur about once every five notes. This is the secret sauce of the Crazy Bus theme. The somewhat rhythmic pedal tones have an almost musical quality. By now we've taken a deep enough dive into the Crazy Bus music that we should be able to recreate it. I'm going to use a sound design tool called Pure Data. It's open source software which can be downloaded freely. First, we create a digital-to-analog converter, DAC, to output sound. Then we connect a phaser, which generates a sawtooth waveform at a given frequency. We'll set the phaser frequency to 440 hertz. The Genesis sound chip produces square waves. To get a square wave from a sawtooth wave, we can set the signal high when the sawtooth is above the halfway point, and set the signal low otherwise. We can do this in pure data with an audio expression. Going back to the formula, we know big N is over 3.5 MHz, and little n is the 10-bit pitch. However, the bits get inverted. For example, 440 would become 583. This is equivalent to subtracting n from 1023. With our new formula, this should result in a frequency of 192 hertz. We can implement this in pure data with a control expression. And we get our expected frequency. From the code, we saw a random number up to 40 is chosen. Then that random number is multiplied by 10. And then 500 was added for the first channel. We can use this bang to trigger the random numbers manually.
In the code, the notes are held for 10 sixtieths of a second, or 167 milliseconds. We can trigger the random numbers using a metronome set to this speed. We can copy and paste most of this to create the second channel, changing the addition from 500 to 600. Likewise, we can paste this again to create the third channel, changing the addition from 600 to 700. This is what the Crazy Bus music would sound like without the overflow bug. For this to be an accurate recreation of Crazy Bus, we need to emulate the overflow bug. We can do this using a modulus operation. For example, it takes 11 bits to represent the number 1100. If we try to fit it in 10 bits, we get 76, which is the same as 1100 mod 1024. In pure data, we can use the percent sign for modulus. Now that we have recreated the Crazy Bus theme, we can experiment with it. First, I'm going to encapsulate this into a sub-patch, which has an inlet for a clock signal, an outlet for audio, and a parameter for pitch offset. If we instantiate this sub-patch three times, we get our recreation of the Crazy Bus music. But let's try a crazy double-decker bus with six channels. And if that's not crazy enough for you, let's try 18 channels. Taking what we've learned, I've written a Python program to generate Crazy Bus music as a MIDI file. MIDI allows us to realize the Crazy Bus theme using all kinds of instrumentation. For example, Grand Piano. Tubular Bells. Timpani. Voice ooze. Orchestra hits. I've put my pure data patches, Python code, and a sample MIDI file onto GitHub. Feel free to experiment and let me know if you come up with something interesting. Thanks for joining me on this crazy bus ride.